Hey everyone, it's Moixia. I haven't seen many great resources about Season 4 Ward Control, so I want to go over that today in this video. What we're going to be covering first is defensive warding, and why this is extremely important as both jungle and support. All roles, actually, is very, very important for everybody. And so the very first thing we're going to concern ourselves with is the defensive warding of our jungle. So to start off, if I'm playing jungle and I'm feeling like I'm going to be threatened, almost always I'll put a ward right here. Pink ward. Because the reason is, oftentimes what will happen is the enemy jungler will ward this location a lot, and they'll be able to see everything you're doing. This is the most important defensive location for a jungler. You want to pink ward this as soon as possible in the, ma uh, in the match if you're going against a jungler who is very strong and can beat you in duels. Another great warding spot for defense is right here and you want to see how that that little blue cursor when it hits the green it means it's inside the bush right there so we want to let that go and we're gonna get the most amount of vision based off that right there this is gonna give us a lot of vision and if any if mid lane is coming through to gank our bot lane our bot lane has collapsed or having some problems or the jungler is coming in to steal our red buff we'll see it right there great defensive great defensive ward right there now we're gonna go back around and another very great pink ward I love to use is right here. If you put a pink ward right here, you're going to get a lot of vision of the jungler trying to gank top lane. And you're going to get a lot of vision of mid lane roaming top, possibly. You also want to remember to, get, to take care of your blue buff. And usually I like to ward the blue buff right about there. Get some good warding, uh, get some good coverage right there. And that's going to just protect you just in case, um, you know, they're going to contest that buff. And these are the wards that I'll mainly use for defense. So if I'm behind or I know I'm going to have some problems, I will make sure that I have these places covered. At, uh, sometimes I don't ward that blue buff. At the very, very least, though, I'll have a pink here every time. Sometimes if I notice their support is warding a lot, I'll put a pink ward right here. And that's going to help me out a lot because it's going to enable me to... Uh, Clear wards out of their jungle and give them less information. Very, very important for defensive jungle warding. Okay, so what else do we need to know? Once you've got your jungle and your bushes, a pink ward right here is also really, really good. Uh, it can sometimes contest dragon, and sometimes you want to use a pink ward to contest dragon right here as well. Now... Thinking about defensive wards on the jungle side, I don't think we have much else to go over. I think that's pretty straightforward. I want to point out some offensive wards now. In case you're ahead, this is some things that some junglers really do not know. So I will show my favorite locations to ward offensively. The first location you want to ward offensively is this bush right here, or this bush if you're on purple side. This is by far the most awesome way to get tons of knowledge about their jungle. You're going to know when they come through here to do red. You're going to know when they do wraith camp. You're going to know when you're safe to gank lanes because they're going to be um, in these camps and you'll know that you're good for a bot lane gank because they just reveal right here. If I want to contest red or blue, I will specifically ward those buffs, but only if I want to contest them. Otherwise, I won't worry. All the information you're going to need is probably going to be right here. Likewise, if you'd like to ward... Let's see if we can pass by fiddlesticks here without being not harassed. Okay. Leave us alone, guy. I'm on a mission here. Excuse me. Yeah, he's really serious. All right, there he goes. All right. Swim against the current. Likewise, if I want to actually ward offensively on this side, I'm going to ward up here. And uh, this bush right here, I think, is ignored by a lot of junglers. I want to really cover that right there on that edge. Just get in that bush. Boom, look at that vision. Right in the middle here, you'll see it. You'll also see them going around for wolves. Likewise, a very good ward here for blue control is right on the edge of this bush. You're going to get a lot of vision right there. Just wait till that, see how that turns green? And you're just wait till that cursor turns green. You get all kinds of information about that. And this is what's considered offensive warding. This is a very good use of three wards. If you have their buffs timed, you're not going to need to worry about when he's at that red buff. You should know already. Uh, based on when he's going to, uh, based on when you last left him off. If you want to use pink wards, I'd probably keep them out of his jungle because he's just going to clear them. So I would most likely uh, just leave them here, here, or for dragon or uh, control. 
And that's going to be offensive warding for the jungle and defensive warding for the jungle. Great. So what else do we have to go over? Up until mid-game, you don't have to worry about Baron. I would start warding Baron in non-serious competitive play, like non-diamond at around maybe 22 to 24 minutes. You could go earlier if you feel like there's some reason you need to, but with the uh, Feral Flare changes as they are in this current meta, there isn't much threat of Baron before that on non-coordinated teams, so you don't have to worry about that too much. I would keep Dragon Warded if you have an extra ward. Pink Ward is always good, and going by occasionally is really good to clear this as well. And that basically leaves support and warding for bot lane. And warding for bot lane is a little bit different in each scenario. So let's say that we are in our bot lane on blue side. The first, the first ward we're going to want to do is we're going to probably want to ward to keep this bush open. And then we're going to want to put a ward if we can on the edge of this bush right here. It's going to provide us a lot of information. And you'll see if I put it right on the edge of that bush, right where that green cursor is, it's going to provide us a lot of information coming up here if the jungle is coming up here. If we have a ward on dragon, even better. You want to put a war in Tribush only if you notice a lot of ganks or potential to jump over this wall. I'll usually just ward right here. It gives a benefit to my jungler. And in addition to that, it's going to also tell me when mid or bot is going to go through my jungle to roam the tribe. Because if I have an existing ward right here, no worries. They're not going to, I know that they're not going to go have to go through tribe because I'll see them if they do. So no problem there. Likewise, I'd like, I think you should also keep that bush warded on purple side. I think this bush is pretty important. And this bush as well, in case jungle does any kind of lane ganks or anything like that. So, uh, after you have your sight stone, um, the kind of like golden, the kind of golden trio is if you can, you want to cover dragon, you want to cover tri bush, and you want to cover a ward right here. And that's going to prevent you from, again, you could just use one. So we could just, let's say we're in kind of like a sight stone type game now and we have sightstone well let's see let's look at two let's look at three good wards so we'll put one ward right here we got one two three right but that's not going to cover our lane here so we might want one and then we might want two and then we might want three here and we won't ward try because unless they have a gap closer over this wall there's no way that they're gonna actually even if they do we'll have full vision of them that's a way to prevent those ganks, okay? So, it, you need to obviously be a little bit situational about this. So, if you notice a lot of jungle pressure, then this ward's going to become a priority. If you are a support, do not rely on your jungle for warding uh, necessarily. They're probably not going to be able to ward as efficiently as you are until very, very high elos. In fact, uh, I don't even see this kind of warding in high plat right now. And I would say it's fairly uncommon even in low-level diamonds. So... You need to be responsible for carrying your team, and you can't blame anyone else but yourself. So you need to be the one, if your jungle is getting collapsed on, to put a pink ward here, to make sure you have a red trinket so you can clear wards out of here, and be able to control this area. It's going to be up to you to be able to protect your jungler from himself. <laughs> so, that, I think, is a very basic warding tutorial that... Uh, I don't need to add any more fluff or anything. I think that's pretty much self-explanatory. There are more aspects, of course, if you're mid lane and top lane, but I just wanted to cover jungle and support for this video. And in general, if you're past the mid game and your laning phase and you want to uh, improve your uh, warding skills. So I hope this helps you, and I hope you use it in game to win against your enemies. Thank you very much, and I will see you next time.